OK, great. Well, this is lesson one in your term one required material, and this is the title of your textbook. Your textbook is Inspire Chemistry. Um, these are the topics that you will learn throughout the year. In term one, you have three topics, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. In term two, you also have three topics, and in term three, you have two topics. If you want to know the allocated periods for each topic, this is the number of periods allocated for each one. OK, so lesson one, energy. The title is energy. What is energy? As you know from physics, energy is the ability to do work. So what is energy? Energy is the ability to do work. Uh, for sure, there are many different types of energy. One of them is the kinetic energy and the potential energy. There is also mechanical energy. There is chemical energy and there is electrical energy. There are many different forms of energy. Now, energy is the ability to do work. Potential energy is the energy due to composition. But here, here in chemistry, you will hear about the word chemical potential energy, where chemical potential energy means okay, when we say chemical potential energy, this is the energy that is stored in chemical bonds. We will not speak about the potential energy that you speak about in physics. We will speak about chemical potential energy, which is the energy stored in chemical bonds. OK, now kinetic energy is the energy of motion. Taban, you know that in, in uh, chemistry, the particles of reactants and products move. So when we measure the velocity by which they move, this is called the kinetic energy, and it is represented by Ke. This is Pe. OK, now law of conservation of energy, as you know, energy cannot be created nor destroyed. This is the law of conservation of energy. Energy cannot be created nor destroyed, but it can be changed from one form to another. For example, here when we are burning the fire, this is changing of a potential energy in, or chemical energy into heat or thermal energy. And here we are changing the mechanical energy to make electricity according to this. So we can change energy from one form to another, but we cannot create energy and we cannot destroy energy. What is the definition of chemical potential energy? Is the energy that is stored in a substance because of its composition, or you can say stored in chemical bonds. OK, now we want to identify two types of reactions, exothermic reactions and endothermic reactions. In terms of endothermic reactions, at it, as it starts with N, this means the heat goes in, means the heat is absorbed. OK, now in exothermic reactions, the X means exit, means the heat is released, the heat goes out. Now, in endothermic reactions, delta H is positive because heat is absorbed, and in exothermic, delta H is negative because heat is released. And when I say heat is absorbed, this means that the system absorbs the heat, the heat goes into the system. When I say exothermic, means the heat goes out, the heat is released. So, when you feel this one from outside, how does it feel? The, this container will feel cold because heat went into the chemical reaction. But this one, when it releases energy, how does it feel from outside? This one will feel hot. So we have two different types of chemical reactions in terms of heat. Now, there is a huge difference between temperature and heat. Temperature is the measure of average kinetic energy. So I can say temperature proportional to kinetic energy. When the kinetic energy increases, when the kinetic energy increases, this means the particles will move faster. The 
particles will move faster. And when the particles move faster, this means that there, there, will, there should be increase in temperature. So what happens as I increase the temperature, the particles will move faster and their kinetic energy will increase. Now what is heat? Heat is not temperature. Heat is energy that flows from hot object to cold object. Okay, so heat is energy. And whenever we say energy, this means its unit is the joules or kilojoules. Okay, now it flows from hot objects to cold objects. For example, if I have two blocks in contact, one is at 50 degrees Celsius and the other block is at 20 degrees Celsius. Now, how will the heat flow from the 20 to the 50 or from the 50 to the 20? We said from hot to cold, so it will flow in this direction. If I have a cup of Pepsi, the Pepsi is at 25 degrees Celsius and I want it to be cooler, so I will put blocks of ice in it. The ice is at zero degrees Celsius. Now the heat will flow from the ice to the Pepsi or from the Pepsi to the ice, from Pepsi to ice, from hot to cold. So remember, heat flows from hot objects to cold objects. Now, how do we measure temperature? Temperature is, is measured by the thermometer. This is easily done. Thermometer will measure the temperature and it can give you the reading directly either in, either in Celsius or in Kelvin. Now heat, there is no uh, instrument to measure the heat. How do we measure it? We have to measure it by using a rule. Okay, in the next slide, you will know what is the rule or the formula for calculating the heat. Now, the units of temperature and heat. Units of temperature, either Kelvin or Celsius. What is the relation between the two? Kelvin is equal to Celsius plus 273. Now, the units of heat are joules or calorie. Be careful, this is small calorie and this is capital C for calorie. These two, we usually use them for food. When we are measuring the heat in food or the energy in food, we use these two. I want you to remember that one kilojoule is equivalent to 1,000 joules. And one capital calorie is equivalent to 1,000 small calorie. Okay, calorie and kilo, they are the same. So these two are units for measuring heat and the temperature is either measured in Kelvin or in Celsius. Okay, now from all this table, I want you to memorize one thing only. One joule, one calorie is equivalent to 4.18 joules. Okay, so this conversion is very important. So the first conversion for temperature is Kelvin equals Celsius plus 273. And for heat, the important one is one calorie is equivalent to 4.18 joules. Okay, convert 39 Celsius to Kelvin. These are all conversions between Kelvin and Celsius. So remember, Kelvin is equal to Celsius plus 273. So here we have Kelvin equal 39 plus 273. Here we will say 962 equals C plus 273. So you will calculate C. And here 152 equals C plus 273. Okay, try to solve and find K here and find C here. Here K will be um, 2, 11, 312. Okay, here the Celsius, you do uh, 962 minus 273 and here you do 152 minus 273, so this answer will be negative. Okay. Now this question is from last year exam. How many energy in joules is supplied by a nutritionist bar containing 472 calories? Remember, this capital calorie is equivalent to 1,000 small calories. So this one will be 472 times 1,000 calories. Okay, remember, capital calorie is 1,000 calorie. Now how do we solve this question? We have the rule. The rule is given here. One calorie is equivalent to 4.18 joules. Now here I will write, this one is calories, so I should write it under calories. I don't write it under joules, so I will say 472 times 1,000 calories. This is how much? Because the question is how much energy in joules. 
So under the jewels, I need a question mark. Now we will do cross multiply. We multiply the opposites. Okay, and then we divide by the one that is alone. So I will say 472 times 1000 times 4.184 divided by one, which is equal to, and then you will find the answer. I think the answer will be something times 10 power six. I think this is the answer. Okay, now another question. A breakfast of cereal, orange juice, and milk might contain 230 calories. 230 calories, directly remember, this is 230 times 1,000 calories, and I want to convert it to joules, okay? I want to change this calories to joules. Remember the rule. This is the same rule that we used here. One calorie is equivalent to 4.18 joules. One calorie is equivalent to 4.18 joules. So here we will say 230 times 1,000 calories is equivalent to how many joules? Cross multiply 230 times 1,000 times 4.18 over 1, and then you get the answer. It will be 9.6 times 10 to the power 5 of joules. Okay, now pause the video and answer this question and then check the answer. Okay, a chemical reaction releases 75.5 kilojoules. Remember, this is equivalent to 75.5 times 1,000 joules. How many calories? So he wants the calories. Now remember, one calorie is equivalent to 4.18 joules. Okay, now he give you this in joules. Do, where do we write it? Do we write it under calories or under joules? Taban under joules because this the same unit should be over each other. Okay, and then I'll put how many calories? So I'll put question mark under calories. Now cross multiply, you will get 75.5 times 1000 times 1 over 4.18 and then you should find the answer. Okay, now specific heat. What is the specific heat? From the word specific means it is fixed. Like every element will have a different specific heat capacity. Look here in this table. Water in the liquid state, this is the specific heat. Water in the solid state, which is ice. Ethanol, beryllium, each element have a different specific heat, okay? Now specific heat is symbol is C. Okay. Which element have the highest specific heat on all this? This is water. Water have the highest specific heat. This means it does not warm quickly and it does not get cold quickly, okay? Who have the least specific heat? Gold. Gold have the least specific heat. This means its temperature will change very fast. It will become hot very fast and it will become cold very fast. Okay, now the unit for calculating specific heat or the formula for specific heat is, is Q equal M times C times delta T. Q is the heat and its unit is joules. M is the mass and its unit is grams. C is the specific heat, which we just spoke about. And delta T is the temperature change the one T final minus T initial, and the unit is degrees Celsius. Now from this, if I want to calculate C, C is equal to Q over M times delta T. What is the unit of C? Q is joules over mass is grams, delta T is Celsius. So this is the unit of the specific heat. Joules over grams times Celsius. Now let's do practice. Okay, now if we have two substances, one have a specific heat of four and one having a specific heat of one. Okay, which one will get hot faster? This one. This one will be hotter after a period of time because it have low specific heat. If a substance have low specific heat, this means it will get hot very fast and it will get cold very fast. Okay. Now we use the formula, how much heat is absorbed by 34 grams of water when heated from 30 to 60. Uh, remember that you need to memorize the specific heat of water. C is equal to 4.18 joules over gram Celsius. Okay, now we will use the rule Q equal M times C times delta T. M 
times C times delta T, find the answer and check your answer. Okay, now pause the video, solve the question and check your answer. Okay, you have here example one, example two, example three. I want you to read the questions and to, to find your own answer and then check the answers. Okay, now this is a question from last year exam. A 65 gram sample of solid lead with a specific heat was heated from 22 to 38. How much heat is absorbed? Remember, when we say absorb, this means that the temperature increases from 22 to 38. Okay, now use the rule Q equal M times C times delta T. The M is given, the C is given, and delta T is T final minus T initial. Find it and check the answer. Okay, pause the video and do the calculation. Okay, this is also from last year exam. When a 10 gram sample of a substance Q absorbs 47.2 joules, its temperature changes from 32.6 to 45. Substance Q could be one of these substances. How do we know? Taban, we have to calculate the specific heat capacity or C, and then from the C, we will know the substance. Now the rule says Q equal M times C times delta T. Okay, Q is the heat, 47.2, equal the mass, which is 10, times C, which is required, times delta T, which is T final, 45, minus T initial, which is 32.6. Okay, now C is equal to, Okay, 47.2 divided by 2. Okay, it will be 0 0.3, 0 0.3806, which is approximately 0 0.381. So the substance is copper. And from the specific heat, I can know that the substance is copper. Okay, this is the end of your lesson one and uh, study work.